very warm welcome to all my viewers. I'm Seema Choria and I welcome you all to another insightful session on Great Principles. To all the viewers who are watching it for the first time, Great Principles is an educational and interactive talk show that brings together best school leaders from the world. Awake, arise and stop, not till the goal is achieved. We all know who said this. Well, Swami Vivekananda, the great guru and leader that he was. Swamiji believed that we all need two kinds of knowledge secular knowledge to improve their economic condition and spiritual knowledge to infuse faith in ourselves and strength our moral sense. Please join me in welcoming my secular guest who is here to share his wisdom on learning and living. Mr. Kuldeep Sarolia, founder, director and trustee, Sourceford, Sourceford Group of Schools, Bengaluru. Welcome to Great Principles, sir. It's truly an honor to have you today. Thank you. Thank you, Simaji. It's an honor speaking to you. Uh, uh, it's an honor being on this great channel and network of great principles. Thank you so much, sir. We truly are looking forward to an insightful session and I'm sure my viewers are gain, going to gain a lot today. So let us start where it all started. Once upon a time, you dabbled in the corporate sector for a few years and traveled the world only to return to your roots and that is your country, India. So what made you to return to India and become an educator? You know, I was wondering. Uh, mm. I think I was a little lucky. I was at the right time at the right place. That was the year 99, 2000, and you know, the, uh, all the internet and people traveling abroad. I also had many opportunities to go ahead and work. And I made some dollars out of which, because of which I was able to start the school. Uh, my grandfather was a educator. He was a principal of a government school, retired as a director of education. I saw him, worked with him, and was very inspired with lot of his things which he has done, right? written books and all that thing. So there they came a point in life where, you know, we I had to take a decision whether to continue the corporate world and, you know, continue to add zeros into my life um, or, you know, take a call and retire and do something which is more uh, motivational and linked to my nature of spiritualism also. So the school is something which we are doing it from last hundred years as a family, and uh, it is what we do. Uh, I'm sorry if I if I don't want to sound vociferous, but uh, I come from a Brahmin family. Brahmins traditionally has been teaching from last three thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand years. That's their job, I think, uh, in four varnas as defined by Gandhiji. Uh, so I thought that's my job. I let me do my job of teaching, and uh, I came back uh, and. Uh, I started so sport with just a couple of children and uh, by God's grace, they picked up and um, it's going on now. The source food group of schools is going on. Our idea is not franchise or chain. Uh, we believe in the models of uh, Shanti Niketan by Rabindranath Tagore, Rishi Valley School of Krishnamurti, Harvard of US and Oxford of London. And we look forward that source food goes in a similar uh, fashion rather than into a franchise or a chain or do that one. We impart a good Sadhvidya value education to a limited group of students and make leaders for future. Yeah. Wonderful, sir. I wish you luck in all your interviews and I'm sure that uh, Sonsford Group for School will succeed in the same direction as you have visioned it for. So, you know, talking about the 2000 year back, you know, it was the era of Guru Dakshina and today we don't call it Guru Dakshina, we call it fees. But I always wonder, why don't we call schools as business? How wonderful it would have been if education, you know, not education, but schooling was really a business. We could have actually brought in some quality. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, with a changing perspective, um, if the government permits, uh, uh, school could be considered as uh, businesses and they could be individuals and people and organization who can run this entity uh, as for the purpose of business. Um, personally speaking, school is by and large a community service. Uh, that's how I yeah. take it, uh, uh, like a temple. You know, when you make a devsthan or a temple, um, it is by and large a community service. So even if you're getting funds, you move those funds back for community services. You Either you operate hospitals or you operate schools. Similarly, my uh, thought process is that school is by and large a community service. And that's why it is. it should be by and large uh, non-profit. Or even if the profits are coming, it should be funded back for the purpose of uh, education. But by the, by the way that the things are changing times, which is happening, 
it is already becoming schools are becoming you know, businesses this is one side of the coin there is another side of the coin also because both side of the coins have got changed in last couple of decades which is schools have become uh, businesses and parents have become consumers and customers they behave like what service will i get whether my child will have an yeah. ac or not so you know both side of the coin it's it's very it will be wrong on our part to totally you know uh, tell that schools have or school owners have become both sides of the coin have got changed in the changing world and i i am in, in, assuming that with this the point is very valid and very uh, futuristic also that with the changing times also if the government also makes that fine both side of the coin have got changed i am the maker of the coin i will declare school as a business profit entity you declare profits you pay taxes i am happy i am getting my taxes my job is done so probably it's what your what your thought and idea is, is good for uh, future but some educators some people uh, i think so there are some teachers like me who would still like to love to run school as you know as a non profit and as a contributing to the society so they can have we can have both kind of authenticity yeah. yeah i completely agree with you sir but you know when you ask in your class how many of you want to be an educator i don't i really don't know how many hands will go up because uh, education our, our teachers are not paid of well and ultimately we all have to learn our livelihood and all we all want to reach to a certain level right and today we see edtech companies they are ultimately catering to schools and to the students and they are doing phenomenal they are being funded crazily so you know that is how this thought came to my mind why not turn schools also into a corporate and i really don't see anything wrong in that sir Yes, I fully agree with you, Sima Ji. Word to word, that uh, schools could be turned into a corporate entity, into a business hub. And moment we are we are asking in the class, how many of you want to become teachers? Majority of the hands are going up, but when they come to know about the pay scales, uh, uh, you know, they get demotivated and they don't get. But again, here I would point out uh, that uh, uh, the salaries are linked to fees, right? Salaries are linked to fees. and when fees is in india are heavily regulated right from kashmir to kanyakumari both by the state and the central governments and there are agitation of parents so you know it's a huge 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 cap on the uh, this thing so there's no free hand on the part so uh, if you give a like um, uh, recently our current government has permitted some of the universities to define their own curriculum uh, and with the target that you should be in the top 5 universities of the world and define own fee structure and do anything on that point they have given free hands uh, as a test if the same modus operandi could be adopted in the schools we could have one of the best of the best of the schools uh, or you know uh, corporate and um, um, we can pay very good salaries as at par as far as salary is an issue uh, for the teachers i assure you this issue is not only in india this issue is worldwide even in boston one morning when i got up and i was reading the newspaper there was a rally by the teachers on the pay scales which they are getting in 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 us the salaries are paid by the us government itself uh, you, we get 10 dollar 20 dollar fees altogether the fees is paid by the government um, now there is no more guru dakshina earlier guru dakshina uh, uh, was still not given by students guru dakshina was given in kind by students not in cash by students earlier we were getting dakshina 10000 20000 years back by the king So if I have to start school 10,000, 20,000 years back, I used to go to the king. King used to give me the land, and I used to build that like Chanakya did it on the outskirts of uh, Magadha. Uh, 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 and my, many such cases, uh, Aristotle, Alexander did the same thing in Greece. Today, my king is not giving me any money or land. So the point is, how do I get that funding? So the social contribution or partnership is the only way, which is you know I go back to my parents and i ask that uh, let's contribute and uh, this thing if king starts giving money like in united states for each student uh, 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 if i can share numbers if i am running a primary school i can get a funding to build up the building from bill gates foundation or anybody and then i just have to take 100 admission and in 100 admission was here the government is paying me roughly around 25000 dollars for each child for higher classes 30000 dollars for lower classes 20000 dollars on an average 25000 dollars for each child so i send an excel file to the government government transfer that money to me and i using that money i transfer salaries and expenses and i show to government that this is how i spend it 25000 dollars 
is approximately approximately 22 23 lakh rupees now you think what they are doing there in 22 23 lakh rupees we indians are doing better in just let's say on an average 30 40 50 thousand or 1 lakh kind of a fee that's an average fee structure in india and i'm not taking very low all from yeah we are delivering far much better students in this thing if we get that kind of funding or even you know so our see indians are one of the best educators and knowledgeable people across the world that's known to uh, this thing yeah. they just need a right environment to perform that's all they need Certainly, Sorry, sir. Uh, completely. No, no, sir. I completely agree with you that yes, quality comes with the price tag, and that is why when we say that where is quality education, and uh, you rightly said that fees is something which defines the ultimately the salary of all the teachers out there, and that is why when children look up the pay scale, they just withdraw their hands. All right, I don't want to be a teacher. There's such low income there. Anyway, sir, this but, is a discussion. Yeah. Your model is great. Make it corporate, make it business oriented. Uh, you say, like, for example, when you're selling a mobile, no, nobody nobody's saying what this price you have to sell it off, right? So make right. it open. Let the government Absolutely. let the government come and say you charge one rupee or you charge one lakh rupee. I have nothing to declare. You are making profits, you pay me taxes, and I'm I'm out of it. It is a parent call. Now today it's not the old times where parents are not educated or well traveled. They're educated and well traveled. They can take a call. See, I can take a call that I need not go to Taj and have my breakfast because it will cost me 2000 rupees approximately. I can have a, my breakfast at a corner, good South Indian restaurant within 100 rupees. Excellent uh, idli and dosa, I'll get it and I'll have uh, my coffee and done. But if I go to Taj and I want to have that breakfast and Simaji, suppose you are the owner of the Taj and I go and say, as per regulation, blah, 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 you can't charge more than 200 rupees to me on that breakfast. And I have a reservation also, so you can't charge more than 100 rupees to me. Otherwise, agitation, newspaper and media, and then you see, I'll ensure that your Taj pool is shut down or Taj hotel is shut down. So that, that is what is happening in the school segment. And, you know, we are tying the hands of the edupenios and telling them now you fly now you try on that your idea is that great is, I, I i support on that part. great sir that is the whole idea we wish to see more edupreneurs joining in and bringing in the quality schools and quality education because ultimately the future of nation is dependent on the education of the youth youth is the face tomorrow so wonderful this will this discussion will go on now moving ahead to our next question sir there is you know i'm sure my viewers must have envisaged till now that sir has the spiritual side also when sir was talking about chanakya and about the history he is very well read and learned person and he's fondly called as sir so to all my dear viewers sir is into education since so many years and he believes that on the 360 degree holistic education to a child covering body mind and soul well sir body and mind understood you know how do you educate soul yeah i think that is the purpose of life altogether uh, that we are born to educate the soul only uh, body and mind is getting educated and both will get finished also but uh, you know uh, this will continue so you know this will become uh, i to my young students we um, impart certain level of uh, spiritualistic education which helps them manage stress in times to come uh, achieve leadership position in corporate worlds or business world uh, uh, make them stable and happy and the negative aspects which we are hearing in the world right now of uh, uh, drugs uh, and suicidal tendencies and depression gets wiped out through the powerful tool of spiritualism or soul education so once they understand about the word I, like who am I, the power of I, and the belief in I, then it is like, it's okay, uh, I'll manage. So that stress is, uh, uh, like few day before yesterday, my daughter told me that uh, her friend is under depression. So my immediate question was, what is that? Can you like, elaborate more? Well, she's feeling sad. I told her when we used to feel sad or under depression, my mom used to come and give me a huge slap and that depression used to go away like, gone. 
and we used to feel highly motivated and start delivering on the work so i know those times are gone but uh, mm, these are young generations and they are hugely connected on social media and network and mm -hmm. so spiritualism is one 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 such powerful tool sima ji even for your mm -hmm. own children um, uh, if you can impart that education and if they if your children don't know pythagoras theorem or mendeley periodic table it is perfectly okay but if they understand that little bit of that they will be huge ruthless powerful strong leaders in times to come and when in future they will be in different parts of the world say london or dubai and sitting alone in a hotel after an hectic day they will still be motivated and not depressed they will say okay i'll they will not go out in on weekend and say you know i'll chill out they say no i will chill out the world <laughs> i need not chill out myself <laughs> so that that gives out our there are various examples of leadership in that um, uh, uh, through spiritualism uh, right or wrong i will not debate but these are leaders through spiritualist training vivekananda ji was one such example uh, which we had uh, second powerful spiritualist ex example was gandhi ji you forget him as a political leader and what he did read and study him as a what spiritualist powerful person he was what kind of food he ate what kind of uh, uh, dhana he used to do then our indira gandhi herself read on this paper forget all the politics and whatever she has done good bad i which forget moment the words the names which i am taking just don't listen to those words as a political leader just listen to them as a spiritualist and how they became powerful leaders modi ji our current prime minister uh, what spirit what strength he gets it you know ruthless things he is able to what, where does he gets all these energies from Uh, our current uh, CM Yogi Adityanath, such strength, uh, seven times, six times, seven times MLA uh, from the same. Point. So the question, as, as we as the teachers or as the researchers, come up: How do these guys, you know, or Rabindranath Tagore, the kind of uh, stress he went through it, and then he refused, and the story, then how he built on this? His family life was also a little, little um, uh, challenging, um, at a, right. and then all this. but how he so all that strength come from that uh, you know not from body which is your sports uh, mind which is your education uh, mind is your cramification and learning physics chemistry wala but the soul which is the spiritualistic angle so agar man mein than li to to fir duniya itself is a very very small thing to uh, target so it's all sub that, that education we are trying see maji yeah completely agree with you sir you know it's not about only about the drugs and all the things which is going about are they are these days even children have uh, depression and they feel that they isolated even with the heart breaks every now and then they have the crush and then they are not able to move on so you know this these are the small small things uh, just small things which they take up and their entire life is spoiled so yes you rightly said the spiritualism the spiritual aspect you need to educate the soul so that our children are able to apply the knowledge and they are able to you know generate better to to be a better human being and that is why we need the spiritual side of education it is so great to understand this and to know about this so this is what is needed to by all in all our schools today that this needs to be replicated everywhere so moving ahead sir in our conversation sir you mentioned that uh, you know you belong to a brahmin family so uh, i think our uh, uh, vedas talk about sadh vidya so what is this sadh vidya and uh, also i would like to know from you what are the benefits of this sadh vidya yeah, yeah i think um, when we get born there are three even shima ji you me all of us we go to, we are born to learn that's the purpose of life right from childhood mamma mamma water we start to learn mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. vidya and after vidya comes the sadh vidya which is your values of your life you know i will not steal i will not cheat uh i'll be um, humble and i will uh, serve my parents i will serve my teachers i will serve my country these are sadh vidya elements which are there there is huge aspect of it and the third uh, this will so vidya becomes you know running till uh, 20 approximately sadh vidya is running parallelly on to this path then by the time a human is turning 40s and 50s and 60s the third element of education which is brahm vidya which is your spiritual education your connection with your god you start questioning your existence and purpose of life this happens with every human being on this planet earth yeah, by the time they it's not that the old age is impacting then 
you know, they start questioning. So our life revolves around Vidya, Sadvidya and Brahmavidya. Sadvidya is one element which will give the strength uh, uh, to achieve anything in life. And uh, I think uh, that's what we should try and teach uh, uh, the, our children on in times to come. Absolutely, sir. So Sadvidya is something which is needed to be practiced. It's kind of like, you know, good learning. When I googled about the word, I came to know it's called about good. It's, it's good learning. That is what is Sadvidya is. And sir rightly said that this all students need to go ahead in life. So moving ahead in our conversation to all my dear viewers, if I'm going to talk about sir's uh, awards and recognition that he has received, I'm not uh, sure whether I will be will be able to encapsulate all here in this episode. So recognition, you know, seems to be like a second name of sir and uh, the world knows and respect you for the for your contributions as an educator. So tell me, do awards quantify a person's efforts in their chosen field of work? See, Maji, it, it, uh, it uh, motivates a person. Awards are something that, you know, it motivates a person. To a Sadvidya spiritual person with a destined goal, they don't need awards. But somewhere or the other, there's a human element. That moment we, we get some appreciation or an award. So we get motivated to go ahead and do th those things more. So mm, I think um, when we receive such appreciation from different organizations who themselves are doing very valued services to a lot of educators and principals like me, we feel motivated. We feel like doing it more and going back to the society and doing more and more about it. Uh, like for example, in Sadvidya itself, which is beyond value, value education is just well, one book, which is one 30, 40 page book in grade one to 10. Sadvidya is beyond value education. Well, value education is just one part of it. I have told a lot of my parents also, and to a lot of principals also, that you see, Maji, even for your own two children, this is the right time to give Sadvidya. This will be an invisible thread. Uh, um, you will be able to tie your children. These new times, you will not, we, we, you and me as educators and parents will not be able to dictate terms to our children. For example, when our children in future will come out and ask, Ki dad and mom, can we probably go out for a party and all that? That invisible threat, Sadhvadya, that time will help us tell yes or no. But if that thread is not tied at a very young age, this invisible thread of Sadvidya is not tied. How do we build up this Sadvidya? Um, there are various practical models to do, do that part, uh, to build up that uh, um, uh, invisible thread. Um, Charan Sparsam is one element uh, which we do on birthday celebrations on cake cutting, mandatorily by all students to parents. Some parents are they, oh, it's not required. We tell them it is not for you, it is for the child we are doing that. Uh, uh, going to spiritual places like churches or temples on Sunday. Church, they themselves are going it, but we encourage parents also. Uh, uh, Anadanam on uh, birthdays, either it is your own birthday, Simaji, for example, your own birthday. Ensure that morning we go to some old age home and all that thing. Joy of giving should be celebrated. So these are some of the practices where we see this aspect of life. Uh, because we want our children to come back to uh, us as parents, come back to us as a school. Uh, we want that when they grow up and they are contributing. And all this is possible only at a young age. Moment they hit teen, teen is 13, 14, 15, that's teenage. Moment they hit teen, you know, then we will not be able to control and put that Sadvidya. This Sadvidya thread could be tied at an early age of like one year, two year and probably we are done by 10, 11, 12, if you are successful. Uh, so there's a whole course and a curriculum which we do here, Sadvidya, uh, as part of that thing, so that the child becomes a huge leader. Your parents, my parents, all parents say, concentrate, concentrate. Now, if you go and ask, how do we concentrate? Like, if we turn back, kya hai vidhi, concentrate karne ki? Koi ek glass pani peena hai, ya kaise dekhna hai? So, you know, there are methodologies and scientific techniques, even in our Vedas themselves, that uh, leads to a humongous amount of concentration. A concentrated person can study within half an hour, approximately five hours of work, if a concert. So, in Sadvidya, all these things is covered so that, you know, by the child is entering, the child is in a self-decision mode, uh, and he or she takes a right decision on that part. Simaji, yeah. Wow. 
wonderful sir you know learning about sadvidya is so great and it really gives me joy that yes today parenting has become challenging and we all are seeing so many things so many tips how to be a good parent how to be a pro parent how you can tie your child with you and how your child can come back to you so this simple tips shared by sir here just just follow the sadvidya principles and you see that your children are always grounded with you wonderful sir and i really like your thought where you mentioned that yes awards and recognitions do motivate us we all at times need motivation for the good work that we are doing and we will keep on doing and once we are rewarded it's a benchmark that now you have we have to excel more we have to achieve more so wonderful thought sir here going ahead in our next uh, next question sir it says that you know with your level of expertise and responsibilities you spend your day and night dedicated towards the service of others so who who do you look up for your advice support inspiration and who is it educationist who is always there to help you and guide you hi <laughs> it's one of the toughest question a uh, lot of people ask me that day uh, i don't know i can answer this question here because this is an spiritual uh, me uh, this is an secular uh, me but uh, if i have to answer i look up to shiva so but if somebody has to i have a huge shiva uh, sitting next in my school uh, uh you, it's a huge huge thing so i look up to him so if you believe in jesus you look up to jesus and i i don't know i look into myself if i say again if i sound egoistic i'm sorry and this is where i want to encourage look into your soul look into i question yourself who am i and you will have all the answers i think the best answers and best learning comes when we are quiet alone the world's best learning whether it was archimedes in the bathtub or einstein or uh, our rishis they got or uh, steve jobs when he came to india and stayed at neem karoli baba ashram he got the idea of apple when we are silent not talking so i think we get inspiration from that shiva ji i would encourage you also just go to a solitude to spend some time in bangalore very famous shri shri ravi shankar ji Uh, he came and he stayed couple of weeks here and then he identified and then he built up art of living all together in silence he got uh, so i think uh, um, this thing uh, but for motivation purpose like sima ji i the great principal work which you are doing is currently i'm looking forward to you and learning from you i interact with lot of uh, you know i take interviews and with lot of educators and principals in various seminars and conferences you have seen me doing that thing I, i i'm learning from you so like dattatre he learned from 24 gurus and there were 24 different gurus for him uh, everything in the world became a, somebody asked him who was your guru he said i have 24 gurus so right now shima ji you are my guru uh, as far as great principal network is concerned one of the 24 gurus for me humble sir truly humble you know and this is what a true learner is he always looks for learning everywhere and this is the biggest trait of a leader a leader is a lifelong learner and that is what we can see in sir also and uh, sir i think you said the best thing you know introspect sit and introspect just look within yourself and all answers are there you don't need to look up anywhere and that is when we connect to our soul right when we are sitting in solitude so wonderful to all my dear viewers to all my dear students out there take time just sit quietly and just look inside yourself look within yourself and you will see that guiding light coming up to you so on this wonderful note we reach to the very interesting segment of the show which is called rapid fire round sir you have to answer in a word or a statement i'll try i'll try my level best All coffee right, with so simaji coffee with simaji wonderful <laughs> so don't call me simaji please so yeah. here we are reaching to the first question and it goes like What are your hobbies? How do you spend your recreational time? Doing nothing. Wow. If I could be uh, like three hours, for, three days, four days, but yeah, one day is a good. Doing nothing, one day. I think that's the best thing to do. At times, we all need to just stop, pause, and relax. Do nothing. So wonderful. Going ahead to the next question. If I would ask a funny or weird incident in your life, what would that be? there are hmm, there are many uh, uh, funny and uh, uh, learning incident i am not able to recall right now sorry am, no worries sir yeah. a quick tip for our parents out there a quick tip for our parents out there 
सदविद्या फ्यूचर इज सदविद्या फॉरगेट विद्या फॉरगेट ब्रह्म विद्या वन वर्ल्ड सदविद्या to all my dear parents stick to this sadvidya and sir sort have of explained it very detail in a detailed manner how it is going to benefit to your students and children out there going ahead to the next question one of your hobby is reading so what do you enjoy reading i have read avid books uh, in last 20 years i am an addict like you know like a, people call me a smoker of reading so if i don't read uh, i have a you know tension so something like it but yeah last uh, decade i had been more on the uh, you know sadvidya and spiritual reading uh, about uh, how to evolve our body so by and large it's sadvidya and spiritual readings which are there of all I, from right from quran to bible to you know their aspect um, I, recently i'm reading rumi um, uh, uh, one of the great aesthetic uh, uh, of this so by and large spiritual readings which i'm doing right All right, coming to the last question in this segment, which says that the two years has been challenging and tough for everyone. How it was for you? How was your experience of these two years? Oh, it was the best phase of my life, or probably several lives altogether. And my assumption, I have told my friends and people and parents also, this could be because we were in isolation. Best time to learn, grab things, and evolve yourself, so that whenever the opening up happens, we we are prepared for the world. in a far much more better and a shining way this was a time to sharpen our pencil uh, shine our gold inside so that whenever the world opens up like for the best example which i can give it to you is i have a very known good friend uh, her name is seema uh, ji and she is doing all these seminars so when this will open up after two years because of the lockdown these seminars are held when this will open up it will get converted into physical networking and far much more greater learning education prizes and award so the foundation the neem has already been laid so this was one of the best investment which you have done so two years has been for me and depends on people also they it was one of the best fruitful times certainly you know all of us you know came out to know what all we can do we actually understood there is so much within us and we are just lying somewhere and not focusing on what where where we can reach so rightly said sir this two year was full of opportunity along yes there was some challenges though but there was lot of opportunities and those who grabbed it certainly did the best phase of your life so go this brings to me to the last question of the show this is called viewers choice question so my viewers say that all educators and social spiritual leaders have a vision and they wish to lead the world guided by this vision as as an academician and a vedic scholar what is your vision how would you describe your vision for your students uh, i look forward to making my students happy uh, which is a synonym of a millionaire uh, or a distilled word of a millionaire happier is on happiness question they are happy happiness means uh, they enjoy what they are trying to do uh, whether they are into kitchens or uh, or uh, they want to make money out of the world out of the stock market they want to get into the corporate world or business world they have a family oh, they are happy uh, that's all that i think that will kill depressions drugs guns problems of united states uh, many countries are as a student they are facing many um, problems so and that happiness will come through not by looking outside but by looking inside and studying self not by studying my friend or what he or she is doing or what he or she is wearing but but by looking inside and the trick to that is sadvidya so if i can implement and make even one or two students um, of my as happy near i think i have i have achieved my purpose of my life so you have a beautiful vision of creating the happy world ahead i think so this is a wonderful vision that you have and we wish you luck here too so so you know after this conversation this amazing completely thoughtful conversation what i learned today was we do not learn from experience we learn from reflecting on experience and uh, i think thank you so much for introducing me with this gem of a principle of sadvidya and this experience reflecting and introspecting yourself finding your true self within you and you know lot more i learned from you today and i'm really blessed and i feel privileged that i got an opportunity to interact with you and share your journey with my viewers and i'm sure so many educators are going to be benefited thank you simaji honor was all mine i enjoyed talking to you <laughs>